What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because in this video I'm showing you guys a deck that I haven't updated in a very very long time and the reason I'm updating it is because the ban list just came out and it brought back scapegoat to two. Why is scapegoat at two really important? And I feel like this is not talked about enough but a deck like Trickstar which I'm going to be showing you guys in today's video relies on this card very very much because not only now can it stun your opponent with all the trap cards it plays but it has an OTK option and that helps a deck like Trickstar a lot because their biggest weakness is that their monsters are really small and they don't do that much damage. But now with something like Scapegoat back at two, you have a chance of OTKing your opponent really and fairly easily to be honest with you. So if you guys enjoy the deck profiles, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. I will say that I love bringing you guys post banlist deck profiles. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and with that, onto the deck profile. Okay, so to get started off with this profile, we're of course starting off with Triple Trickstar Candina, Triple Licorice. Yes, we're playing Triple. I know some people like to cut this down to two, but I feel like in this deck where it's more of a pure Trickstar build and you're not playing the level five and the rank five engine where you just summon a bunch of level five monsters and try to make rank fives. In this kind of build, I think you really want to see the Trickstar names as fast as possible. So that's why we're maxing out on Licorice here as well. Then of course, one Lily Bell as well as two Trickstar Corbin. Again, you're playing pretty much all the good names. One Lily Bell is enough, obviously, when you search it. And I think two Corbin's enough. I was trying to play this at three, but the problem with playing it at three becomes like when you draw multiples of it and it's not really good in every single situation. So that's why I think double Corbin is just perfectly fine. Then we're playing, of course, triple Joel and Lockbird, the last monster we're playing, the only real hand trap we're playing. And that's because because of course we all know the Joel and Lockbird reincarnation combo that's still a win condition in this deck and it just being a win condition is enough for this deck to be viable especially with scapegoat now at two so then for the spell cards we're of course playing the one light sage triple extravagance now we're playing triple extravagance because you guys will see that if you actually I want to say this if you guys have ever played trickstar pre all the hits like pre light stage hit pre scapegoat hit etc etc you know how important scapegoat was in this deck so this deck really focuses on stunning your opponent holding it down and then using that scapegoat getting into scapegoat eventually of course with your extra and whatnot getting into your scapegoat using that scapegoat and otking your opponent so we are playing triple extra of course and double scapegoat here we're also playing one called by the grave just for any hand trap so i'm gonna get into this just a little bit right now just before we get into our trap cards i want to explain why double scapegoat is so good and why really i thought of this deck automatically when i heard double scapegoat so if anyone actually played trickstar like i said earlier before all the hits when trickstar was really popular what happened was scapegoat was really a staple everyone played three scapegoat because at the time it was at three and the reason for that is because scapegoat on its own is a one card boral sword dragon and at the time it was like wait if i could just stun my opponent with my trickstar monsters with my reincarnation with my artifacts with you know whatever is available if i can stun my opponent just long enough to where I can get to a scapegoat, that can be my win condition. So that's kind of where this deck is really, really powerful. Now you have to keep in mind that Boral Sword in itself is, is not like necessarily an OTK, especially when the Trickstar monsters themselves have really small attack points. But you have to keep in mind that the Licorice, for example, burns your opponent every time they draw. The Candina burns your opponent every time they activate a spell or trap card. So what ends up happening is you do a lot of like little chip burn damage and then once you get to your scapegoat and you can make your bowler sword from there on you're probably going to have enough damage to otk your opponent so that's why it's really important with this deck where it's kind of like you really want to max out on the trickstar names and that's why scapegoat is so important with that let's move on to the trap cards we are of course playing triple trickstar reincarnation reincarnation obviously is really powerful not only for the hand effect where you can banish your opponent's hand not only for the droll and lockbird lock where pretty much essentially that's another win condition for you those two are obviously really great reasons to play this card but a lot of people forget about the other effect of this card where where essentially if this card is in your graveyard you can banish it and then target a trickstar monster in your graveyard and special summon it again this is also really important because like i was saying with boral sword if you have a boral sword plus a candina on board sometimes that's not enough to game because if you think about it boral sword attacking twice is 6,000, candina is only 1800 so that's actually only 7800 so unless you do burn damage somewhere else you won't otk your opponent however if you already have a reincarnation in your graveyard essentially what happens up happening is you can reincarnation in the battle phase summon another monster and then go for game that way so do you kind of see what i'm trying to say so there's a lot of situations where reincarnation obviously is really good for its hand effect and its lock and all that stuff with the draw and lock bird. however it's also really good because it does help you otk as well then we are playing triple ice dragon's prison ice dragon's prison is really good in today's format you guys have to keep in mind that in today's format really brave pk is going to be one of the best decks in the game now the pk monsters are a warrior so with that you can really just 
banish two PK monsters and they have a really tough time playing through that. If you think about stuff like Eldritch, Eldritch is going to be really popular as well, only because Skill Drain is now at three. Now, if most people are playing double Golden Lord and they have one in the graveyard and they end up like summoning one, then you can I IDP the Golden Lords and that's also really powerful and that's also really strong. So there's just a lot of situations where IDP is really, really good in today's format and that's why I think main decking three of this is very important. Then we are playing triple infinite impermanence. I think Imperm is just, it's really good because it hurts a lot of decks. It breaks a lot of boards, especially when you're going second. Now this deck, I will say, will struggle going second. It's of course a rogue deck and Trickstar, even when it was meta, always struggled going second. Now I will say this though, with the Imperm and with the Droll and Lockbird, you don't have to necessarily just use the Droll and Lockbird for the reincarnation lock, right? You can also use your Droll and Lockbird in just any general sense. Droll and Lockbird is pretty good in today's format in general and hits a lot of decks. So if you're going second and you have a Droll and Lockbird, it can be pretty powerful as well. But yeah, I do want to say that because this deck notoriously does kind of struggle going second, Imperm is very powerful only because again, if your opponent makes a Griffin, like they're playing against a Brave board, right? And your opponent makes a Griffin, most of the time that's going to be their only negate because a lot of decks in today's format Matt will make the brave engine as their negate and then put up disruption stuff like dpe um, i know some people play dag though with the scythe engine granted that engine doesn't really hurt you too much but in general people play that so because of that uh, imperm is really good because if you just imperm that one negate or you imperm that one disruption then you're pretty much safe and you can just do all your combos and do all your drawing and everything from there right that's why imperm is really important then we're playing triple torrential tribute now torrential tribute is really good in this deck because one you're not going to be summoning a lot of monsters in general outside of like when you go to scapegoat and you go to boral sword so really you're only going to have maybe a licorice maybe two licorice on board at any point in time maybe a candina it's not going to be like you're going to have a bunch of monsters so you can afford to play torrential but on top of that even if you hit your own monsters again this is why reincarnation is so powerful because a reincarnation bringing your monster back from your graveyard is essentially a reason for you to be able to torrential at any point in the game even when you have monsters on the side of the field and then feel safe feel like you can still continue to play after that right that's why torrential is really really important also breaks just a lot of meta boards in today's format and that's really important that's why we're playing triple torrential and of course we're playing triple trap tick which pretty much searches everything that i just mentioned to you guys you can search a torrential you can search an imperm you can search the idp you can search a reincarnation before trap trick people had to draw into double reincarnation plus a draw and lock bird or they had to draw one reincarnation plus one candina plus a draw and lock Awkward. Now with Trap Trick, it makes it a little bit easier because you can open just one reincarnation, one Trap Trick, because this is essentially going to act as your other reincarnation, plus your Drone Lockbird. Like there's just a lot more ways to get that Drone Lockbird condition off now with uh, Trap Trick. So that's why this combo is really good and that's why you want to play Trap Trick. But of course, IDP is a really good one and Perm, all the other traps that I mentioned. But there is one more important trap that Trap Trick can search and that is double artifact sanctum right over here as well as of course one artifact scythe now the reason you're only playing double sanctum is because really you just want this for your trap trick target you want to banish one set the other one so you can scythe on your opponent's turn and the reason you want to do that is because really after you use the first sanctum the other ones are kind of dead that's why you're only playing two and of course you are playing the one scythe now scythe is kind of bricky i won't even lie to you scythe is kind of bricky however this package is just way too strong in today's format not to play especially in a deck like this where you're not forced to make dagda you can just straight up trap trick into a sanctum and then sank them into scythe and, and you're in a, such a good spot right if you think about most of the combo decks if you think about any combo deck really in today's format scythe is just going to shut them down scythe is pretty much a lockout card and another win condition for this deck that, that, that's, that's why this deck is so cool now especially with scapegoat back at two because you have this win condition with the reincarnation draw lock bird you have the scapegoat into boral sword win condition you also have the scythe which is going to lock your opponent out and that's almost like a win condition in itself as well so like there's so many different ways to win with this deck and that's why i think this deck is really really cool and really really fun in today's format right and then lastly we are playing triple solemn strike solemn strike is really good because again like i said this deck does struggle going second solemn strike is a really good trap card going first but solemn strike is also a really good trap card going second that's it for the main deck it's a 40 card main deck i'm i'm very happy with this main deck i've been testing it out now you have to keep in mind that this deck is a rogue deck at the end of the day but i think it does play out very very well and this deck is really really cool especially with scapegoat back at two and if scapegoat comes back to three it's it's going to be so viable just because scapegoat is essentially what this deck is missing in the sense of this deck doesn't have a lot of strong monsters but scapegoat gives you access to strong monsters so that's why scapegoat's so good so moving on to the extra deck here we're just playing cards that pretty much you, you you see that we're not really going into the extra deck outside of the scapegoat so all the extra deck cards in here are pretty much scapegoat fodder to get into boral sword so you can play triple link karibo 
triple link spider triple uh, nightmare phoenix if you guys don't know the combo pretty much all you have to do is once you flip the scapegoat you go into link uh, spider you go into link karibo then you make nightmare phoenix then you use the link karibo effect in the graveyard to summon itself back and tribute the token and then with nightmare phoenix links karibo and link spider there you go a bunch of link monsters but yeah with link spider link karibo and nightmare phoenix uh you essentially make a boral sword dragon and that helps you otk but sometimes you can go into cerberus as well the really nice thing about this is if you are going second or probably later in the game when you are making boral sword with phoenix and cerberus as options for you essentially you can pop a back row or pop a monster if you need to so that's why these two are really good but yeah so we're playing double cerberus as well now here i'm playing double boral sword and double access code access code is another target that you guys can make with this deck just because now with scapegoat and access code is really easy to summon you can use the phoenix the link spider and the link karibo into access code and i will say the access code has that really cool effect where you can banish to pop right the nice thing about this is phoenix is a fire link spider is an earth and then Kribo's a dark. So they're all viable targets for access code to just break an opponent's board. Now I know access code in the real TCG, if you guys are playing IRL, is kind of pricey. So you don't have to play double access code. Boral Sword I think is a little bit more affordable. So you can play triple Boral Sword and one access code. Other Link 4 monsters that you guys can play and that are options are Boral Load Dragon as well as Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax. These are both more budget options to access code if you guys can't access access code that's funny but if you guys can't get to access code you can play avermax you guys can play boral load as well really the best one to go into is boral sword that's really how you otk with this deck boral sword is the best one but just wanted to show you some other link options you have access code avermax like i said and boral load boral load's also really funny and powerful actually low key people are not always prepared for this card it's pretty powerful but yeah that's it for the extra deck just wanted to show you some options but i will say do not change the three link Kribo. do not change the three link spider do not change the phoenix and do not change the cerberus or the boral sword you can only the only thing i would say with boral or did you can up it to three so you don't banish it off your extravagance but otherwise yeah I think this is perfect. Really, the only time you're going into your extra deck is uh, with your scapegoat. You're not even playing Holy Angel. For a while, I was playing Holy Angel. You don't even need it. There's no point. If you go Extravagance, and let's say you're only playing two Link Karibo, and you banish your Link Karibos, but you don't banish your Holy Angels, then it's kind of like, okay, well, now I just automatically can't OTK you anymore. So you don't want to put yourself in that position. This is, I just think, the best way to play the extra deck. Just max out on whatever you can, and max out whatever on whatever you need, I should say. But yeah, this deck is really, really fun. I think you guys should try it out. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Now, one thing I will say with Trickstar is there's multiple ways you can play the deck now. You can play the deck like this in a trap way with Scapegoat and you can try to OTK. There's another build of the deck that people kind of went to for a while and that was kind of like playing Instant Fusion, Ready Fusion, summoning level five monsters, trying to make rank fives and kind of control the game in that sense. But I think the scapegoat option is really, really fun. I think it's really, really cool. And it brings you back to Trickstar from when they were like really, really meta and they played three scapegoat and they controlled the board and then they went to for the OTK. That's kind of how this deck plays out. But if you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you guys did enjoy. And with that, Spanko, signing out. Peace.